Are you looking for other ways to self-publish your author brand? No, I'm not just talking about eBooks. I'm not talking about print books. And I'm not talking about just audiobooks. I'm talking about something completely different than what I've shared before. And you're going to learn about that in today's podcast and more. So make sure that you stay tuned. This is Self-Publishing with Dale. And if you want to learn more about publishing books that sell and building an unstoppable author brand, then you've come to the right place. And I release a new podcast episode every Monday on every major podcasting platform, including Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud's one of my main ones. Uh, make sure that you hit that little follow or subscribe. And do me a huge favor if you could. If you're enjoying some of the content, and if you're not enjoying the content, leave a nice little honest review for me wherever that's at. I would definitely appreciate that. And it goes without saying, I'm going to go ahead and say today's episode has been brought to you in part by the DIY Publishing Course Monthly. This is my best work to date. Listen, folks, if you're enjoying the YouTube and podcast content, then you will love, beyond a shadow of a doubt, love, love, love the DIY Publishing Course. And you can get access to this now in a monthly subscription model in three different models based on whatever budget suits you best. And that is over at DIYpublishing.biz. Again, that's DIYpublishing.biz. Do yourself a favor get rid of that learning curve and just go ahead and get right down to the nitty gritty. Learn more today in self-publishing than you will ever before at DIYpublishing.biz. Well, folks, today is going to be a very interesting episode as I am actually recording the podcast again through the various Facebook groups of the DIY Publishing Course community and the Self-Publishing Books community. Just want to say a big what's up to everybody that's watching currently or catching the replay. Uh, Right now, though, uh, I'm focused right now on the podcast, and I'm going to talk about kind of a new self-publishing model to to me, to me, and maybe to a few of you that might be listening in as well. We've dealt with eBooks, and we've dealt with print books, and we've dealt with audiobooks, but is there something else we can publish? Believe it or not, there was actually a candid conversation I had with animator, legendary animator, the one who did He-Man, he did Space Ace, uh, the uh, video game, uh, also uh, Dragon's Lair. His name is John Celestri, um, and John and I were kind of talking, and uh, and he kind of had, he he did a gentle correction. He's like, self-publishing isn't just books, Dale. It's like, self-publishing involves so much more than just books, and I was like, well, for easiness sake. I always just say self-publishing with Dale and it people just kind of know that it's about books, but he's right. There's so much more. In fact, if you think about it, us podcasters are self-publishers. We're self-publishing our podcasts. Us content creators over on YouTube, we're self-publishing videos. So there is another avenue for us to consider. All right, folks, let's go, go in the way back machine, if you will. We're going to think about create space. Oh, Ah, my heart kind of sinks right now. I miss Create Space. Yeah, it was closed back in December. And, you know, my wife and I made a substantial living through Create Space over the years. And, you know, it kind of saddens me. A lot of people, we can say it, it merged with KDP Print, but come on. Did it merge or did it just go away? Because, I mean, there was so many things that was nice about its user interface and the things I had available. A fun fact, I actually published a music CD. That's right. I am a musician. Uh, If you've watched any of my videos, you'll see in the background a guitar hanging up. Uh, I actually been playing guitar since I was a kid. So, um, and I've been in many, many bands and this is well prior to me even being a full-time author. I actually used to uh, write a lot of music and I decided to go ahead and publish this. This was well after me doing my first books. I was like, oh, well, CDs are available through CreateSpace. Let me go ahead and do this. And it was actually quite an easy process. Now, I'll be straight up with you. Outside of a couple copies that were bought from me and, and friends, <laughs> I didn't sell much more than that. I didn't put any kind of effort into actually promoting or marketing it. I just wanted to kind of make it. And it was kind of cool. Uh, and here's the thing is CreateSpace actually had, it, it was a print-on-demand service. And as some of you know, it, it had paperbacks available that you could publish. You could do DVDs. You could do CDs and you could do streaming video, which oddly enough, that streaming video would be featured over on Amazon Prime Video. So if you had a membership to Prime Video or a certain kind of um, 
an agreement with CreateSpace. It would allow you to be a part of uh, the Prime Video program, so on and so forth. I, I never took advantage of them through that, and I'll tell you why in just a, just a second. So um, CreateSpace just became dissolved, and each of those particular assets were sent over to different sites. And one of them, as some of you know, print was moved over to over to KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing. So if you had books that were being published through CreateSpace, they were pretty much forcibly moved over to KDP. If you haven't moved them yet, please come on, move them on over there because right now they're just dancing out in the outer space, just limbo in purgatory. Get your books out of purgatory, put it on over there. But I have a feeling that 99.9% .9 of you have already moved it over to KDP Prime. And the, the streaming service ended up going over to something that's called Amazon Prime Video Direct. Actually, it used to be called Amazon Video Direct. Then they decided to go ahead and screw with my head and change it to Prime Video Direct. So when I used to call it AVD, if you hear me say AVD, it's now PVD. So I just go ahead and say Prime Video Direct just to kind of, you know, make it harder on myself. So it moved all those streaming videos over to there. Now we have the physical assets, though, of the CDs, the DVDs, and um, Blu-rays. Now you're going to go, but Blu-rays? Now, I don't ever remember CreateSpace having the Blu-rays option available. The reason is they moved it over to something that's called Amazon Media On Demand. Now, you can just Google that up, literally. Amazon Media On Demand. Well, four words right there. And you'll find their, their thing there. And it's, it's surprising. It's just kind of hiding in plain sight. It's like a lot of those other things that Amazon has. They're like, it's just like, yeah, we've got this. They're such a large company that's grown so fast that so many of their product iterations and offerings, it's hard to keep track of it. I'm surprised that they could even keep track of it. I bet you Jeff Bezos probably is just kind of like, I've got Amazon Media On Demand. He probably doesn't know half the stuff that he's got. So let's go ahead and dial it back for just a second. I want to focus on Prime Video Direct for just a second here. It essentially is like YouTube Lite, okay? Now, why I say YouTube light? YouTube, you're able to get away with a lot of things. You know, you 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 can have these JoJo looking, you know, automated thumbnails. You can even throw in whatever you want to for that. You can put up any kind of content that you want to. You can do calls to action. You can do links out. You've got a lot of space. Prime Video Direct, eh, not so much. If you want to do a call to action or put your website inside your description or inside your video, they're like, eh, -eh no. They, they literally want just indie films being uploaded. Now I say indie films, pretend like you're going to see a movie outside of like the long trailers and things like that. Uh, they just want the content. They don't want anything else. And trust me, I tested it so many ways. I tried to put in my website. They're like, no. I tried to phonetically put in my website, no. I tried to even verbally call to that call to action. They're having humans go in and vet this content to make sure that it's good to go. And uh, so, <laughs> yeah, um, eventually I just gave in and I, I even talked to one other uh, indie film uh, maker, um, name eludes my brain, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, he, um, he was having the same issue. He tried to work, work around it, but they're just like, no, they just want indie films. It works pretty much similar to Kindle Direct Publishing and also KDP Select and more specific. There's ways that you're able to monetize the brand and for for uh, brevity, I don't want to go too far down this path because I'm going to talk about media on demand more today than Prime Video Direct. Well, with Prime Video Direct, somebody watches your content, you are paid per streamed hour and it eludes my brain how much it was. It might be like, it's, it's based kind of like the Global Select Fund is for KDP. They also have their own type of a global select fund for Prime Video. And it, I think it can, comes out to like six cents per streamed hour. So you're not going to becoming a millionaire anytime soon, but it is uh, once again, another asset and another avenue to grow and build your author brand. And uh, I just highly, highly, highly recommend it. People can also purchase and rent your, your content. So those are other two ways. And there also is a season feature. So let's say, for instance, you put together 12 videos, you put them into a season, people can buy an entire season and consume that. And last but not least, there's actually a subscription-based model. I've actually seen a couple people just crushing it through Amazon Prime Video Direct. And one of them actually was doing guitar tutorials 
this is amazing because what he does is he just puts up, you know, essentially like monthly content. People subscribe to it, pay about 10 bucks per month to consume his guitar tutorials and lessons. So uh, just kind of bear that in mind. Um, let's put a pin in Amazon Prime Video Direct for another day because it, there's so much more involved in it. I'm going to focus on media on demand. And, and the reason is DVDs, Blu-rays, and CDs. Oh my. And some of you might be saying, does, does anybody even buy CDs anymore? Does anybody buy Blu-rays or DVDs? Yes, yes. It, actually, millions of people still purchase those things, and I'm not going to shame them. Uh, it, it, the thing is, and I think this was about a year or two ago that I'd shared the author earnings reports, and it was broke up, broken up into, I think, like five classifications of uh, publication profits being derived from print, it being um, hardback and paperback were two different types. And there was also ebooks as well as audiobooks. And there was a fifth one called miscellaneous. And within that miscellaneous category included things like um, uh, board books. Uh, so board books are kind of like those thick children's books that are kind of made of like the cardboard. And the other one that was listed that was audiobook CDs. Yeah, people are still purchasing audiobook CDs. Pretty crazy. So if you have exclusive rights to your audiobook content, highly, highly, highly recommend you look into doing audiobook CDs. Now you're going to have to select, if you're using ACX currently, you're gonna to have to go with the 25% uh, exclusivity uh, clause because with the 40%, I contacted ACX and I said, hey, I'm going to do this in a different product iteration in audiobook CDs, is this allowable? And they said, no. And I'm like, but it's a different product iteration. They're like, no. It's the, still the same audio content. Like, that doesn't make sense because we can do it's different distribution rights when it comes to print versus ebooks. But you know, I'll save that argument for another day. Uh, I just know that you know I would like to see about venturing down audiobook CD path, and I will be working my way towards that. Here's what I do know. Okay, I wanted to create assets that my readers could come to or even the browsing customers can come to in different product durations not just the three that I'm normally used to we also have video we kind of discussed that where I use YouTube and I use Amazon Prime Video Direct where I do some of the exercise videos inside my fitness books that will send people to the various platforms that way they can learn to do that and it also starts to grow that credibility and authority that I'm in as a nonfiction author now, for you fiction authors, it, it, again, it's going to be it's going to be difficult. You're going to have to flex your creative muscles and figure out how you can utilize those avenues. So, I have these video assets, and I'm like, what else can I do with them? Okay, naturally speaking, I went ahead and turned them into a square format, put them over on Instagram, and fired them off on various social media. Awesome. That starts to raise the credibility and the authority. Well, that's that's easy. That's child's play. I mean, I can pretty much automate the entire process for that. But what about DVDs? I got the thinking as an as an activities director in the healthcare industry. I was there for about 20 years doing this business. And the seniors were always looking for ways to stay active and keep active and exercising because they knew it was good for improving their quality of life. And I didn't always have the time to sit down and do exercise lessons with them. So naturally, as an activities director, I'm like, I'm just going to go ahead and buy some DVDs. And they, they liked it. So rather than doing the same old DVD every single time, I'd go out and buy like one or two a month. And these DVDs would run anywhere from 20 to 70 bucks. Yeah, you heard me right, $70 for an exercise DVD. And the thing is, either I spend 20 to $70 on a DVD I can continue to play you know, over and again, or I hire a professional that comes in one time and gets paid 20 to 70 dollars which by the way i don't ever recall of an exercise professional charging that low and if you are an exercise professional charging 20 dollars for a half hour or 45 minute session with senior citizens increase your rates for crying out loud it's not the 1990s anymore we you know you need to pay your bills um so in any event that's where dvds kind of come into play i know there's proof of concept i know there are people out there still consuming dvds so this is where it comes into play with Amazon Video Direct, or excuse me, Amazon Video Direct, um, I mean, Amazon <laughs> Amazon Media On Demand. Are you confused yet? Um, any rate, here's what I know. What it's gonna do is it's going to provide you with what's called an Amore DVD uh, 
enclosure. So, and meaning that this is what your disc is being held in, the case that's being held in. It's called AMARA, A-M-A-R-A. And you need to have cover art for that. And you need to have disc art also. Uh, the product that I have is is pretty freaking stellar. It looks really well polished, and it's not just me sitting there gushing over my own graphic design. Uh, I really like it. it. It came out awesome, like stellar, way better than I thought. They even when I had ordered a proof of this, it came in shrink wrapped and everything. So I was really cool about this. You also get barcode. Um, uh, the placement's going to be on the back portion. And you can have it in the top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. You can choose wherever you want your UPC. It's fairly intuitive. And again, you can always just order the product to make sure it's placed just right. I, I, what I did was I just looked at other DVDs, saw what the layout was, and I chose what was the most common one. Uh, and speaking of barcode, you do get a free barcode slash product code. You can come with your own if you wish. Uh, but kind of like KDP offers free ISBNs, they will offer you the free barcode to put to your DVD. So that made life easy for me. There's really no loss on my part. I mean, I'm like, okay, don't need to spend any money on a, a barcode or UPC. We're good to go. Uh, the, the barcode, as I had mentioned, is going to be placed on the back and you choose which location is. And here's something I didn't know and something they didn't say inside their uh, FAQ section or any of the uh, information was there's also a barcode placed on your DVD itself. And it was in the bottom middle. And unfortunately, it did kind of cover up just a little bit of the art that I had put in place. And actually, it was, it was my, like my disclaimer is what I put. And the barcode kind of covered it up. I wish I would have known that, but it, it's a simple fix. I can just go in, fix the art, and just upload it. And kind of like KDP is, when you just want to upload and change it, that's it. It's just that easy. Um, something to note is the disc art is smooth. It's not like a paper one that's been slapped on and it has a bunch of bubbles on. No, this thing is burned on. It looks really nice. Speaking of burn though, the data's burned in kind of like almost like it's being put into a computer. So it's not like encrypted like what you would get from a disc that you would get from the store. So it doesn't have like the pretty silver shiny look to it. It has more like a bluish purplish tint to it. Um, is this a deal breaker to me? No, not really. Will your customers notice that? Probably not. Um, you can't use MP4s. So MP4s is, is kind of the gold standard of most videos or .mov. Those things won't work on DVDs. Uh, you have to use what's called ISO files, .iso files. And I actually kind of, I searched up different software and such. I found like a free to use one and it, it like ran me like, it was free, but then you would have like a watermark on your content. I'm like, I, you can't have watermarks on your content. And that was one thing that Media On Demand was very explicit about, no watermarks. So I had to upgrade for like a dollar for the first month for this particular software. And it's worth trying it out. I think it was like for the full upgrade, I could pay like $30 for a lifetime. So if this proves to be worthy over the next month, then I'll probably invest in it. Uh, going into the second month, I think it runs me $14.95 per month. At that point, I might as well just go ahead and just pay for the entire thing outright. Okay, metadata is, is pretty interesting in that it, it shares so much in common with self-publishing through Kindle Direct Publishing. Um, let's start it out with categories. You really don't have a choice in the category. I reached out to their team. By the way, I asked a lot of these things. I mean, they probably got sick of hearing me because they kept sending in inquiries and I fired off. You can't choose the categories. It's They literally will select it for you. And it seems like it's just kind of based on the actual product type more than it is the niche that you're in. So it's not like KDP in that, you know, you have health and health, fitness and dieting and it goes down into um, home workouts and it goes down into abs and it goes down to for women. No, it's not like that at all. It's it's static. Boom. You can't add any additional ones. There's no, you know, extra things you can put in there. So um, but here's the really nice thing though when you do publish your product it will match it up to the similar product with similar info so as an as a for instance i published the 15 minute standing abs workout plan through prime video direct it's been up there for probably about two three weeks now and so it was really simple they put it all together i wasn't aware of it until i just searched up my DVD and I saw they shared the same page kind of like ebooks and print books do. So this is kind of nice that it indexes those two things together. And if for some reason, and they also give a gentle nudge that you can also watch this 
on Prime Video. And that's that's cool to me. So let's say for instance, somebody doesn't want to pay $20 for my DVD, like, ah, uh, they see it's on Prime Video, oh, cool. So they go over and they'll watch that. And of course, either way, I'm gonna get some kind of compensation. So that that's kind of nice. They do honor HTML in the descriptions. Now, the descriptions are kind of interesting. And, and I'm, not, I'm saying this with a little bit of like a twinge on my face, I'm a little confused. It's not like books are. I know I said it is, if you're confused by now, that's all right, I, I totally get it. Because I said you can use the HTML much like you do on KDP. So you can go over to selfpublishingwithdale.com slash HTML to get your product description popping off the page. That's for your books. And uh, Dave Chesson even has one as well on kindlepreneur.com. And when you utilize that, it'll do all the HTML and makes your description look beautiful. And uh, you can use the same thing for your DVD. Well, it doesn't appear next to the product like your book description does. So the book description typically pops up right next to your book. It looks awesome, all's well in the world. No, no, for your DVD, it's just like, here's what it is, it's 19.99. Get it, get it on Prime Video, not for 19.99. Uh, so, um, you scroll down though, just slightly, and there is an area that is essentially almost like the editorial reviews are for Author Central. I think it was like the editorial section is what I think it was called. It, it that's where the the actual descriptions put in the editorial. Like I'm like, what? That makes no sense. So, but. It still honored the HTML that he'd utilized, like I had bullet points in it, it separated out the lines. If you don't use the HTML, warning, warning on this one, it will take your entire thing, however you try to do like an, a line break or anything else, it will take all that and it'll squeeze it into one paragraph. It looks like garbage. It looks like garbage. I remember I reached out to her, I was like, hey, uh, can we use HTML? Because my description looks like garbage. And uh, they were like, yeah, absolutely, here's a link. And they sent me the link over to KDP. And I was like, get out of here, that's so awesome. I'm like, very cool, so that was good to know. It's the small things in life, folks. Uh, the next thing is uh, they actually have something specific, not just the art that you're gonna do for your disc or the Amaray uh, case. You can actually do one for the product page. And this is what I studied other ones that were doing DVDs. They do like the 3D iteration. So if you've got any kind of 3D iteration, uh, a 3D uh, rendering software to where like it you know, makes like 3D book covers, things like that. Like I have one from like years ago, I'm forgetting the name of it. And I finally dusted off that software and tried it out and uh, put the DVD on it. Looks beautiful, looks beautiful, pops off off the page. I did a 2D art and it just, it looked okay, but if you were to look at my product versus somebody else's product, they're gonna choose the other one because it looks real pro. It's got that 3D image. It just, it, it makes you feel warm and fuzzy. So I went ahead and did the 3D image. You get 10 keywords per product. Yeah, that's right. You didn't hear me wrong when I said that, 10 keywords. Unfortunately, now as I'm saying this, I don't know the character limit and they don't have like 10 separate boxes. It works almost like CreateSpace did back in the day to where you separate it by commas. And the really cool things is you hit the comma, it will actually turn into like an automated like box to where you can exit out if you wanted to get rid of it. So you will do 10 keywords. Uh, oddly enough, I went ahead and I used, I used Rocket for this and I went ahead and I was like, you know what, screw it, let's go ahead and use it. I know this is only applicable to eBooks and print books, but why not? Let's throw it against the wall, see if it sticks. So, by the way, folks, if you don't have Rocket in your life, what are you doing with your life? Go over to dalelinks.com slash rocket. Again, that's dalelinks.com slash rocket. Get your, get your hands on it. For some reason, you're not happy with it. It's, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. There's my plug plug. All right. Um, all right, and of course, you've got the title, subtitle, and series name, kind of like a book does. It's really, really simple. You know, just go on through that process. The publishing process was really awesome. They set the bar really really low, but then exceeded it way, way beyond, I thought. So typically you're doing books, it typically, they say it takes 24 to 72 hours for it to be on the marketplace. For Media On Demand though, Media On Demand ended up saying that it's gonna take up to 10 days. And I was like, oh, I was so excited to get things going and get this DVD published. So uh, you can imagine my surprise and my OCD nature. Uh, anytime I find something new, I'm gonna obsess over it. And uh, I go ahead, before I go to bed, like I, I uploaded it 
I'd say it was like 10 o'clock in the morning. I go to bed about, I wouldn't say it was, I wasn't going to bed. It was getting towards nighttime. It was about about seven o'clock at night and I just hit refresh. And the dang thing was already on the market. It was already there. It, it just, half a day, it's already up on the market. It's there. I, so of course, naturally, I would have had an order to copy automatically. It was really neat. It actually had the ASIN already set. And you could click on the ASIN inside your dashboard and it would immediately take you over to the marketplace. It should be noted that uh, all I see so far is that it's distributing to .com. I'm not aware of it distributing elsewhere. There is Japan involved, Amazon Japan, but I don't know how we get that distribution. I would assume it's probably going to have to be in um, Japanese in that supported language and not in English because the same thing works with Prime Video Direct. You actually have to be in the native language in order to get distribution there or at least have some type of a translation. Uh, last but not least, updating details uh, was really, really easy. As kind of like I was saying, uh, going in, I created the HTML. I put it in the dashboard. No sooner had I hit the publish button, it's already over on the product page. I was like, what? And when, when I mean, it, was, it wasn't like minutes later. No, publish. I go over to the product page. It's already there, which I just blew my mind. The next thing was cover art. I threw it in there and I checked it out later. So, um, not the cover art, excuse me, the actual product art. And I had the 2D image. I threw in the, the 3D image on there. And when I went to check it out later on, already there. It looks beautiful. So I was really, really happy about that. So you can sense some of my enthusiasm for this avenue. This is not by any way, shape, or form an endorsement that this is going to make you get rich quick overnight, that you're going to make instantaneous profits. In fact, I haven't sold any of the DVDs outside of the, the one that I did for myself, but I haven't built awareness or never have done any kind of marketing and promotion for it. So there, there is that. So just what I'm always trying to look at is how can self-published authors really diversify what they're doing? And that's what you have to constantly be thinking about. If you're just producing eBooks, and you're also doing exclusive to Amazon, wake up, okay? Because the carpet can be just pulled out from underneath you. You need to have numerous avenues, numerous revenues that are gonna feed over into your brand so that way in dry times, like during the summertime, book sales do kind of drop a little bit. So you need to kind of have more avenues that's going to keep your head afloat and you're able to pay those pesky little things that come in the mail called bills. And that's why I want to kind of put these things out there and also get it to where you're thinking about what can I offer my audience that nobody else does? Because I challenge you, I challenge you to go find an indie author today that has all of those product iterations. Because when you can get all those product iterations all together, the thing is, you can just simply repurpose the same content across all these various platforms. And some people might be thinking, well, you know, that's kind of, you know, it's, you know, we're stacking pennies at that point. No, not really. If you're taking good time to educate your audience and market and promote and build awareness of these different product iterations, you're going to win big. And that's what I really want to do is equip you with all of the right information. So in any event, as the uh, ghetto blaster goes driving by me here, it's Columbus downtown life, what can I say? Uh, I wanna start to wrap things up and before I do, folks, I wanna tell you about the DIY publishing course. You have not joined the DIY publishing course yet. I'm gonna tell you, you are missing out on a great wealth of information. I'm sure you're getting tons from my podcast and you're getting a lot from my YouTube channel or even my website at selfpublishingwithdale.com the wealth of the information is organized in a way that sets you up for victory. And that's what I wanna do for you. I wanna give you the premium information. And that's at the DIY Publishing course. And you can get it through a monthly subscription model by simply heading over to DIYpublishing.biz. Again, again, that is DIYpublishing.biz. In the meantime, and in between time, folks, it's always been my pleasure. And I'll make sure to meet up with you next week this has been Self Publishing with Dale.